You are now tuned into FNL Radio. Every sister just elbow another since he should have listened. Every brother, would you tap another brother and say, I should have listened to her? God help me. Old saints, y'all forgive me, but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You gotta find somebody. Uh, all right, be seated, please. Hey, what up, world? It's your boy Doc, and welcome to an all new FNL radio. I got Monique on the line as well, people. What up, what up, what up, people? Now, it is Friday the 13th, so you know we gotta turn up tonight because it is a full moon outside, so there's no telling what might be said tonight, people. We, um,. Yeah. And I'm going to tell y'all something too Because we got a lot to talk about tonight too I've been doing some investigation Because me and Monique been talking throughout the middle of the week people We got some questions and we need some answers So we definitely have a, uh, a lot to talk about tonight And I've been doing my research So Monique knows what I'm talking about um, Regarding people's ages um, Eyesights and stuff like that So we um, I, I've, been do- <laughs> I've been doing my research this week people It's been that serious But um we got a great show for you all so um shout out to pastor brian to kick off the show at pastor brian talking about these souls ain't loyal so you know we gotta keep it off kick it off with that because right now we gotta talk about someone that's um who who's basically has his share of hoes and whatnot but i'm talking about stevie j now stevie j let's just get right into it he got arrested this week we kind of saw it coming from a while ago because you know he always talked he, you know, he got all these kids basically, and I didn't even know he was forty years old. I thought he was. I knew Mimi was older than him because you know Mimi is pushing fifty, so I knew he, she was older than he was. But I didn't know he was forty, so you know he's forty. I don't know why you even think that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I thought they played with them, you know, with each other's ages. You know, I didn't know, you know, people were younger and whatnot. But anyways, so Stevie J was um actually arrested in Fulton County. Now people. That's in Georgia. I've been, you know, I, my word on the block team been telling me that that's the um, jail in Georgia you don't want to get arrested in. So, but he got arrested in Fulton County um, Jail. He was released on a $25,000 bond on Wednesday in the federal court. But he still has to face allegations that he owes more than $1 million in unpaid child support payments for two children he had with an unnamed woman going back 13 years. So he got locked up on Tuesday this week. And he's about to go to federal court in New York State next um, to, you know, deal with the charges and whatnot and the allegations. So his attorney, Daniel R. Mitchum, released a statement denying the $1.1 million amount as accurate. In fact, he used the word preposterous. So they're basically trying to say that it's not true, but it's, it's let me break down the numbers for you all real quick. So. Court documents show that he was required to pay almost $6,600 a month in child care support uh, starting in 1999. That was up to $8,557 a month in 2011. Was that that around the time when Love & Hip Hop started, Atlanta, around 2011? Yeah, and they are stating um, it's because, I guess, um, at one point in time, his income was like $27,000 a month. So that's why he was ordered to pay so much. So, and it was around the time um, the Love and Hip Hop, you know, started to come on and um, and break out. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, and he really should be ashamed of himself. You know, we're out here running these houses and renting these rings and businesses and, you know, businesses and BMWs and everything else, and you have these kids out here that you're not taking care of, so. 
it's very... you know, it is what it is. But um, I mean, he was he was making a substantial amount of money, so that's why the payments were so high. But you know, you have to take care of your responsibilities. Mm hmm. So I'm about to break down some more numbers for you all real quick. So, um. Uh, news release from the office of the Manhattan U.S. Attorney says that Stevie J um, has payments that have been in arrears since March tw uh, 2001. Now, that would be a little accurate because that's when the last time he had a hit single. Well, not even a hit single. That's the last time he actually produced something because that was the last time the Bad Boy Soccer Continue CD came out and um, we invented the remix from Bad Boy back in the day. So, that was the last time he had something next to his credit. But he did have a credit on the Bad Boy soundtrack too. So, I guess you can say around 2003 was the last time he really had something musically, you know, out there. But, um, it also, um, goes on to say that, um, he re received more than $100,000 in music royalties, um, between 2003 and 2013, between that 10-year, uh, range, and more than 190000 he earned between January and August of 2013. So... I mean, so he really, I mean, he really made some money, and then let's not even, you know, talk about all the money that he supposedly made off of Hakeem. Exactly. You remember when he wouldn't let her see that contract? Mm-hmm. And he was taking <laughs> everything she had, supposedly, allegedly. So, I mean, he has really, I mean, he's made a lot of money. I mean, and for, and for you know, him not to be known really until Love and Hip Hop came out. He has made a substantial amount of money. Yes. So, here's some more ratchetness real quick that I got to show you all because Mona Scott and, you know, her pimping ass is in this mix too. So, according to reports, Mona Scott Young, she bailed him out of jail. I kind of believe it, but I kind of don't, but it is what it is. But things get a little tricky here because she's been accused of lying about Stevie J's finances to keep him from having to pay the uh, child support bill that he's been was supposed to owe. In April of this year, she was subpoenaed along with Bad Boy Records, Jocelyn Hernandez, Sony Music Group, Viacom, Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, a company called The Company with a K, Raymond Benzino Scott, aka Benzino, and Monami Entertainment, which is uh, Mona Scott's production company. Yeah. They're all subpoenaed by Project Child Support to determine the exact state of Stevie's finances so he could begin paying the back the um back the million dollar child support. So that's basically like the child. So know, obviously he had some money somewhere. Exactly. He got some mattress they money. They subpoenaed all of these um you know businesses and things like that and corporations. He had some money somewhere. Yeah, they got they could took the, like the whole team. That's like that stuff when you go to um apply for food stamps and they want to check your statements real quick so they want your bank you know information <laughs> it is what it is so you know all that renting and stuff like that I wonder how he was able to rent because I'm pretty sure Aaron, well Aaron's Renner Center don't check credit anymore so I'm pretty sure he went to Aaron's Renner Center to get all that furniture and that grand piano and stuff like that from you know inside that rental property that they have and you know those rental cars you know I'm pretty sure they had to put down a deposit because even national rental car um, give you make you put down something to rent a car so you know all this foolishness in Atlanta it is what it is but people that's that's what happens when you don't pay your child support and when I be going when I be going to Philly I be seeing these billboards about people you know these groups that get back their child support and stuff that you know you call in you know you get your DNA test real quick and you get your child support real quick from the court system and they want you to snitch real quick so you know, it's real out here in these streets. <laughs> you know what? I have been to Philly a many a times, and I have never seen a billboard like that. You know what? You need to stop your shit. I have never seen any type of billboard like that in Philly. You know what? People do not believe that. <laughs> no, it is. I would take a picture. I'm going back to Philly in a few weeks. I would take a picture of the billboard and Instagram it, and I would show you all that it is real out here. It is a real life situation. Right. <laughs> so. You know, we shall see how this whole thing goes down with him. So and, now um, I guess it is going to be a season four. Exactly. Of Love and Hip Hop, and it has to be so he can pay all his damn black child support. Yep, and you know, we still trying to see about this whole situation with Jocelyn Hernandez and him, you know, actually being married. Is there drama in their relationship and stuff like that? So, 
We definitely. I guess next season, him and um, him and Hasselin will make a uh, sex tape. Mm. Well, you know, Steve, well, you know, Stevie's no, you know, no stranger to set states. Him and, you know, Eve back in the day when she had that dirty tennis ball head with that dingy ass brown head, you know, they had a little situation back then too. So, you know, he no stranger to the, you know, to the game, but, um, you know, he trying to be all perfect. So it is what it is. Um, <laughs> so that's the love of hip hop. And we got more of the TV rundown later in the show too, about love and hip hop Atlanta. Cause you know, we're going to talk about some things that we observed in the show. I am not going to discuss that. I'll just wait yourself. <laughs> but anyways, moving on to someone speaking of child support. Hopefully, she doesn't need it because that's why she got married real quick last month. But congratulations <laughs> to Kelly Rowland. Calendria is pregnant. People now. Yes, people. And she she so far got on Twitter. Yes, she um put up a picture. With a pair of Jordans, her husband's pair of Jordans, and a little teeny baby pair of Jordans, saying something like "my daddy." So I was like, "Oh, that's cute." You know, she took a different kind of approach to announcing her pregnancy because the streets been talking for about a few weeks now. You know, while else was she? You know, Kelly likes to be naked nowadays. Ever since her destiny's been fulfilled and she left the shadow of her sister, she uh, wanted to, you know, shed some skin and stuff like that. So we've seen her album covers being naked, and all of a sudden she got this tarp of a. Josh during type of um, yeah, she wearing blazers all of a sudden. Yeah, and wow. so you know, congrats to you, congrats to you, Miss Kelly yes, Rowland. Congrats, Calendria, congrats. But but I mean, the she, I mean, and the the tennis shoes that she um, posted, they were little boy um tennis shoes. So I wonder, I mean, is she does she know for sure that she's having a little boy or exactly? So that makes a lot of sense as to why her and, you know, like she got married last month. That makes a lot of sense now why she got married so quickly. Because I was just trying to figure out, why are you getting married all of a sudden and we still trying to figure out who this dude is? Even though we know he's your manager and your best friend, you know, you're going to go down the A-Marie route, but A-Marie doesn't have a baby coming. So, you know, you got one up. So, you know, you got a little playmate for your, you know, for your sisters. For the blue eyes, eh? Yeah. But speaking of little Blue Ivy, now, Yahoo News was being a little shady because there was a headline that said, Kelly Rowland pregnant with future personal assistant to Blue Ivy. Yes, I, <laughs> I did see that. So, they're a credible news source in a sense, but Yahoo News, anybody can post anything up there, and people stop thinking that I'm always the person behind all these headlines. I am not bad. I don't always talk about people all the time, even though I did make up that in, um, Wikipedia page about um, Kaya and changed up some information up there real quick. I'm not bad. I don't be around hacking websites and stuff. So, but they actually came out with that headline, and that's almost as bad as when Wendy Williams called Evelyn's um, baby a baby cash register. So, I mean, people don't got no filter these days, you know. Right? I thought we were bad. All having no boundaries. None whatsoever. at all. But congrats to little. Um, to, you know, Beyonce's little sister. I mean, no, Beyonce's older sister. I forgot Calendria is a little older. So, the rest of Beyonce's... I didn't realize she was 33 years old. I always thought that she was younger than that. But, I mean, again, she mixed it. Yeah. She, I mean, I don't know. She's, she, she's actually, she's the same age as me. I'll be 34 next Sunday. She's, you know, right now, technically. She's the same age as, as, as I am. Yeah, so... I don't know. I always thought that she was younger, but... What else? Yeah, Calendria, you know, we, we, we want to pray for her because hopefully that means no album this year or anything like that. So we shall see how how this whole pregnancy holds up for her. But moving on to another situation now. Beyonce's um, and Jay-Z, they had this little... People have been, you know, up in arms about them for a long time about, you know, Lil Blue Ivy and her hair and whatnot. And I've been trying to figure out what the fuss is about. You know, I always joke about it, but I don't talk about little kids, you know, who's below the age of 10. You know, if you 10 and above, I will talk about you. But if you 10 and younger, I won't talk about you so much on the show or in public or anything that like that. I'll beat you, but I won't talk about you. But there's a petition going around for Beyonce and Jay-Z to basically do Blue Ivy's hair.